Welcome to the Stock Trading Tutor channel. If you'd like to create a free DMAT account with Alice Blue, click the link in the description and fill out your details. And you can also get intraday recommendation calls and you can learn robo trading software for free. Now, let's look at seven ways to save taxes under Section 80C. Let's see what is Section 80C first. Section 80C is a provision in the Income Tax Act 1961 that allows taxpayers to reduce their taxable income by a maximum of Rs 1.5 lakhs. This means a taxpayer in the highest tax bracket of 30% can save up to Rs 46,350 in a financial year by investing Rs 1.5 lakh in ATC investment instruments. Now let's look at some of the tax saving options available under this section. First is Equity Linked Savings Scheme or ELSS. ELSS funds are mutual funds that invest a majority of their assets in the equity market. Its lowest lock-in period among other Section ATC instruments and ability to grow tax-free capital makes it a favorite among taxpayers. When investing in ELSS, you cannot withdraw your capital before the mandatory three-year lock-in period. Also, the Budget 2018 has levied a 10% tax on long-term capital gains from all equity investments, including ELSS funds. If you sell your ELSS units after one year, the tax will be charged if the gains exceed Rs 1 lakh. A TDS will also apply to any dividend earned from ELSS schemes. However, as the LTCG tax is applicable on all equity-oriented funds, it is a level playing field for all equity funds. As compared to other tax savings options such as Public Provident Fund or NSC, etc., ELSS continues to have the advantage of investing into equities. Another option is bank fixed deposits. Banks offer tax saving FTs, which are similar to regular FTs but have a lock in period of five years. Interest rates on tax saving FTs vary across banks. Although FTs offer fixed returns, the interest you earn on the investment is added to your income and is taxable. Next is Public Provident Fund. Public Provident Fund is one of the investment options for those who want to save and grow money for their retirement. It is a relatively safer avenue as its returns are fixed by the finance ministry every financial year. Though you cannot withdraw investments in Public Provident Fund before the lock-in period of 15 years, the returns you earn are tax-free. Next is Employees Provident Fund. EPF is a mandatory retirement savings scheme for all salaried individuals in organizations that employ 20 or more individuals. It amounts to 12% of your salary and is deducted by your employer every month. This amount and an equal contribution made by the employer is deposited with the Employees Provident Fund organization. However, you get a tax exemption only on the contribution that you make. Next is life insurance. Most of us purchase life insurance policies to protect ourselves as well as our families. Doing so also helps you save tax under the Section 80C. Whether such a policy is a term life insurance policy or a unit linked insurance plan, in case of term policies, the maturity amount, inclusive of the sum assured and the bonus, is exempt from tax under Section 10D of the Income Tax Act. The situation in unit linked insurance plans is slightly different though. Here, a deduction of up to 10% of the sum assured or the annual premium, whichever is lower, is available, subject to a ceiling of Rs 1.5 lakh. The next is National Savings Certificate. Investment in NSCs issued by post offices are eligible for tax deduction under Section 80C. These have a five-year lock-in period and a fixed rate of interest. The minimum in investment is Rs 100 and there is no cap on the maximum amount you can invest. It is noteworthy that the certificate can also be kept as collateral to get a loan from a bank. Next is National Pension Scheme System. Another retirement-directed investment, the NPS is designed to give you a lump sum amount and regular income once you retire. Upon maturity, 40% of your corpus will be exempt from tax and you can make the rest 60% tax-free by investing into an annuity plan. An annuity is a product that gives you regular pension. If you choose to exit the NPS before the age of 60 years, you will be able to withdraw only 20% of your corpus and turn the rest into annuity. Here we have some of the 
tax saving options, we can see here the risk, the return and the lock-in period and the exemptions, tax exemptions for each of these savings options. First is the ELS with a medium risk and 15 to 18% return and a lock-in period of three years with 10% exemption of LTCG tax on gains of above rupees 1 lakh. Then there's the PPF, that is Public Provident Fund, with a low risk and return of 7.8% and lock-in period of 15 years. And similarly, we can see for the rest of the savings options. Thank you for watching this video. For more videos on stock market and trading, please subscribe to this channel. If you'd like to create a free DMAT account with Alice Blue, click the link in the description and fill out your details.